Welcome to another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, the world's number one traditional martial arts podcast. And the, we're not the one making that claim. We're just agreeing with it. So thanks. If you're new, thanks for being here. Today, Andrew and I have uh, a format that some of you really like, two schools of thought. We're going to bat back and forth the idea of at a martial arts test, should you be showing all of the stuff you've learned cumulatively at that test, or you should only be showing the stuff that you have been required to learn since your last test. Mm -hmm. Did I set that up well? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Hang around. We're going to talk about it. We'll give you the pros and cons as we see it. And of course, as always, we invite your commentary. If you're new to what we do, please start at whistlekick.com. See all the things that we do, because what we do is so much bigger than this show. We have martial arts radio. We have a book division. We host events. We sponsor MarshallJournal.com. We have training programs. We have apparel. We sell protective equipment. We have a Patreon with bonus content. And we have Whistlekick Alliance, the number one offering for martial arts schools with incredible retention and fantastic results. Requires very little time, very little money on your part. And your school will grow. Just hard stop. That is going to happen if you join that program. Why do we do all of these things? It's a lot of different things. Why do we do it? Because we believe martial arts brings out the best in people. And we believe that if we continue to deliver wonderful things to the martial arts world, that more people will train. And we want everyone in the world to train. In fact, we want everyone, everyone, everyone to train for at least six months, because we think that is the easiest way that we can make a positive impact globally. So please support us in our mission to get everyone to do so. And, uh, and we appreciate those of you who make contributions, whether that's through the Patreon or, or other ways. Thanks for being here. And thank you for sharing some time with us. All right, Andrew, this testing thing. This was, this was you put this on the list, so I'll let yep. you start. So the thought, I, I, don't know, I don't know that this was put on, I put it on the list in terms of, I typed it into my phone, but I may have gotten this from someone else. So I don't want to. Stealing other people's great ideas. No, I solicited. I solicited from other solicited people. Solicited other people's great ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just as an aside, if you have an idea for a, a guest mm -hmm. or an episode, the best thing to do is email this guy right here, Andrew at Whistlekick dot com. Yep. And so the thought was, um, in your martial arts school, let's say they're going for a middle mm -hmm. belt rank, whatever, whatever that is in your school. Like if you've got ten ranks before black belt, somewhere in the four or five range, you're having a test. The thought would be in this episode, two mm -hmm. schools of thought. Should that person be, let's say they're they're this is their fifth test. Yep. Okay. Should they be showing every be required to show everything from their first test up until now, mm -hmm. everything they've learned from day one all the way through, or two schools of thought, just show the stuff that they've had to learn since their last test. Yeah. So those are the two. Those are the two sides of the coin. And and I feel very strongly about both options. Okay. Me me okay. You feel strongly about both options, meaning yes on one and no on the other, or yes and yes, yes. on yes. Yes oh, and yes. Interesting. Okay. He, here's why. Here's where my initial yeses are. Okay. Yes, you should be showing everything because if it's important enough to know at one point, it's important enough to continue to know and refine. Mm-hmm. Yes, as yes to the only the new stuff, because we can assume or we should be able to assume that martial artists are keeping up on their training of the other things on their own, but also in a properly structured martial arts class. Mm -hmm. And we want to devote more time to assessing the newer material. Because if someone gets the older material quote wrong are we going to demote them mm, that's a good question yeah um i feel i pretty much feel the same way um but i also we I, have to get an argument going I lean, on one well of these actually ones. i lean a little bit more towards believe it or not having thought about this a little bit more towards just showing the new stuff mm, that surprises me a little bit yeah and my one of the things you said led, helped lead me, push me over the edge there a little bit, is that all of the 
this will be easier to describe with numbers. Okay. Right. So you've learned your form one, two, three, four. You're now, you're learning, you just learned your fifth form. You're going to test. I'm just mm -hmm. using this forms as an example. Yep. Um, when you test showing forms one, two, three, four, and now number five, is number one going to be as good as number five? That's the question that I would pose. And the answer might be yes, but it might be no, because I spent so much time working on this new one. They haven't worked on one through four, but in class, I would assume they're still working on one through four. Hopefully. Right. It, you know, in class, this, yeah. the instructor is still working these other forms. So they're still going through them. But if they've been putting all of their energy into learning this new stuff and it gets even more difficult when you start going up to, you know, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. I, I was thinking that this, this right? becomes much more difficult at the higher, at higher for sure. Yeah, which is why a lot of higher rank tests are significantly longer. Yep. And but but then my question would be, do they need to be? But that's a different that's a different two schools of thought. Um, but those first couple forms they learned, why why did they what is in my head, what is the rationale for learning them? Well, it's just learning them how to move, how to get the body stick from point mm -hmm. A to point B, like how to manipulate their hands and do certain things. Well, by the time they're they're a middle rank learning, going on through their fifth test or whatever, they've already learned those things. Do I really need them to know that form to be as good as the one, the hard one that they're learning now? They've they've gotten, and, and I'm this is me playing devil's advocate, sure. but. They've gotten from those forms what I wanted them to get from them. And they already just now inherently have the principle that I wanted them to get from it. So do I really need that form to be as good as everything, the new stuff? That, that's a question. If you've spent time in a typical martial arts school, take the testing piece out of it. Mm -hmm. As you spend more time, let's, you know, forms one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm -hmm. As you spend more time, and as form two is likely more complex than one and five is more complex than four. In theory, yeah. Usually works yeah. out that way. You are becoming a better martial artist from both the complexity and your time in. Mm -hmm. And without even approaching it in this way, form one does generally get better just because you're better doing it. Correct. And so you could make that assessment to say, this is what needs to happen here at some point, And I don't know if we want to keep, if we want to talk more first, but this was one of the, the things that came up when I devised the curriculum for my school hmm. and it kind of hybrids the two. Interesting. So, and, and, and I, I guess I'll say it now. So students learn the entire curriculum we might be making a small change on that by moving some concepts in mm -hmm. to later ranks. They learn everything they are going to learn with the exception of forms happens by the time they're yelled out. We have 25 techniques. They learn how to spar. They learn their force for first form for yelled out. Done. Mm -hmm. There are no additional techniques they have to learn, mm -hmm. but they have to be able to do those techniques better. Sure. And we have it codified what that means. So, to go for blue belt, you have to know, for yellow belt, you have to learn form one mm -hmm. at level one. For blue belt, you have to bring form one to level two, mm. and form two is at level one. So it continues to stack. Yeah, yep. I see. So we're facilitating that progress in there. Now, what is interesting, this kind of supports <clears throat> what I've said. We, we recently had... Um, the school is still very no, new. We've had two students test for blue belt. Therefore, the, the the version of level one for their form two was better than their level, level one, one for form oh, one because they are better martial artists. Now, sure, sure. Which is sense. what you would expect to see. Yeah. And just for for the audience, level one is can you do it right in a way that you can do it on your own. So I can say, go home and practice that, mm -hmm. right? That That's really all level one is, is that you can stumble your way through and it kind of looks right. Level two is you've added some refinement, there's some speed, there's some power, there's some timing. It's, it looks okay. It looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Right, that's level two. And so I'm just, I'm thinking about the way these two students performed 
their second form. And it was way beyond what level one has to be. Yeah, yeah. So moving forward, eventually let, we'll, we'll go all the way up to level, well, I'll go up to form five. Yeah. So when they're do, learning form five, they should also be getting Kato form one at a level five. Yeah. So at their test, they still have to show they it. Have they're to still show, showing everything. They have to show everything. So your school is definitely leaning towards the one side of your test. You have to show everything. And that all the reason I, I can I can so clearly make this this decision is because I wanted a smaller curriculum. Mm -hmm. Sure. And there are there are schools out there that go the exact opposite. They want a huge curriculum. They want to offer their students as much as possible because they want to give them. It's it's the difference between I want you know uh, snap on tools in my toolbox versus I'm going to take that same money and I'm going to deck out my whole garage with you know the, the cheap generic tools from Big Lots. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, hopefully that that analogy plays out. I think I think so. Okay. But I'm thinking back to other schools. Right. Mm -hmm. It's easier for me to think when I was a student at other schools and, and how I did this. And what happened as kind of a I don't think a hybrid, but a compromise. Because again, length of test is relevant. Sure. Right. Some schools you've got multi day tests. Some schools, it's, you know, you show up at 10 a.m. and we'll tell you when it's time to go. But some schools have an endpoint because maybe they're renting a space mm -hmm. or maybe somebody has a job or maybe it's a child or whatever. We would be threatened in Taekwondo. We might be asked anything, mm -hmm. but we did not show everything. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, sometimes it was <clears throat> random. Sometimes it was our choice. Uh, sometimes it was certain people on the testing board saying, you know, maybe they look through our last testing sheets. I see here you had trouble with this form last time. Let me see if you do it any better now. Mm, yep. Okay. Interesting. I, I get that. I see that. Um, as it, as you progress and you become further along on your journey, um, if the, if you're expected to show everything, the test will naturally take longer because you're going to have sure. more material than no, right? So in my, as an example, I would give in my Shotokan school, the rank just before black belt, you had eight forms you had to know. Mm -hmm. And then when you went for black belt, you had two more. So mm -hmm. when you tested for black belt, you had 10 forms you had to know. And for Nidon, you had an extra two. So mm -hmm. I had 12. And when I went for Sandan, I had to have another two. So I had 14 mm -hmm. forms that I had to be able to do. And... It, I'm not going to say I couldn't do all of them because in our test, we had to, we, we had to do one. He did a pretest, which got a lot of the stuff out of the way, but I, I would imagine the pretest was the stuff that was considered all but automatic. So the pretest were the, basically the first eight forms, the stuff that there's just no way you should yeah. be flubbing this. So, so in yeah. the Shotokan school, it would have been, Hey, on one, two, three, four, and five. First, Heon or Heenon or Pinon or Pinon, whatever your school calls them, right? But those first five, those first five forms, I did not work on them for my showdown test. Partly because, yeah, I just knew them, but I may very well have made some mistakes in them mm. because they weren't things I was working on because the forms for my black belt test were way more important. Yeah. They were certainly a lot more difficult. You've a lot got more a finite amount of time and energy to allocate towards your training. Correct. And and this ultimately this comes down to a philosophy in a school mm -hmm. as to where one should allocate that those resources, resources. of time and energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And so I think there's a lot to be said for allowing your students like, yes, you have to know these things. And mm -hmm. and obviously if you've if you've gotten up to this rank, you you obviously knew those things. Mm -hmm. Um but if you are able to really focus on the new stuff, it allows that stuff to be that much better because you're not being forced to work on the, putting this in air quotes, simple stuff, the early stuff. Notice how I didn't say not important stuff. It's still important to learn. Right. Um, so that's just another way of thinking of it. Yeah. 
Well, what's interesting to me is if, if we take forms and we put forms aside for a moment, mm -hmm. everything else is building on everything else in the way that you might see it in an academic track, mm -hmm. right? If you go from class 101 to 102 to 103 to 104, most of the time, if you went from 101 to 104, you're going to need the stuff that you had would have had in 102 and 103. Yeah, yeah, that's right. If you go from white belt to yellow belt to brown, red, black mm -hmm. belt, forms aside, you're still probably going to be lost. You're not going to be performing those techniques mm -hmm. at the level you sh would be required to or expected to. You're not going to have the concepts, whatever those might be, in that school that there is a reason for this progression. And, and I'm sure we could come up with examples of schools that don't do it that way or, or you know, do that poorly. Mm -hmm. But it really, it, it's forms are that different thing because there's the memorization there. Yeah. And I love forms. I think most people out there know I, I really love forms. But when it comes to an academic setting, I hate memorization. Yeah. I, I don't think there's a lot of value there because, and there are plenty of people who, you know, they struggle on tests or they struggle at memorizing things, but they understand the concepts, right? This might be that delineation of someone's really good at implementing the material. They're a great quote fighter. And then you have other people who are great at their forms, you know, and, and this is one of the things that I think we both love about martial arts is you can maybe specialization isn't the right word, but you might yeah. have aspects that you love more than others. And that's where you can hopefully spend. Yeah. There's time. a place for everybody, depending on what they want to really work on. No, I would agree with that yeah. for sure. I think, I think I'm confident in saying there's no one way that is better. I think like so many things that we talk about on here, it comes down to how do you run your school? How mm -hmm. is your school run? Mm -hmm. What are the goals? What is the curriculum? What is the definition of that advanced rank, whether or not it's black belt or, or whatever, right? There, there's some definition that is being worked towards. And as long as the rank progression brings you closer to that, I think it's great. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I don't think any one way is right or any one way is wrong. Um, I think that I want people that listen to this or watch this episode who have a say in this, right? Obviously, uh, you know, there, there'll be a lot of students listening to this mm -hmm. that don't necessarily have a say, mm -hmm. but... But you have a say on what you practice. Correct. Um, but, you know, hopefully it gives you something to think about. Yeah. Things that make you go, hmm. Arsenio hmm. Hall reference. Good times. Hmm. 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 Is that, is that it? Yeah, that I mean, I, mean I, I, I would love to hear from the audience. Yeah. You know, what does your school do? Um, you know, is it a all or nothing sort of thing? Mm -hmm. You have to do everything or is it just the stuff you most recently learned? I'd love to hear from other people. And I think the other piece I'd like to know about in there is are things weighted, mm. right? For example, you know, I, I, gave, I mentioned, well, you know, people rarely get demoted. So if you're expected to know your beginner material as an intermediate rank and you don't know your beginner material, do you automatically fail the test? Mm. Is it is it a pretest environment mm. where, you know, I, I know some schools that they'll run kind of that pretest or I, I've heard it described as maintenance testing where you've got to show that you continue to know these things yep. at higher ranks. And there are so many ways of doing this. And I'd love to know more. We'd both love to know more about how your school does that. So let us know. How do you do that? You can email us, andrew at jeremy at whistlekick.com. You can hit us up on social media at whistlekick. You can find where this episode was posted, both at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, as well as on the Facebook group, Martial Arts Radio. All great options. You could send us a carrier pigeon. My dog might not like that. Send me the carrier pigeon. Yeah. Uh, if you want to engrave things on some homemade dog treats, they could go to you. Care of Daisy. I think they'd be too Daisy care of you. Okay, sure. That's fair. Unless you're going to eat them. If they're made really well, maybe. There's some, there's some solid dog biscuit choices out there now made with people food. Yeah. 
And if people can't eat it, should you really be fitting it to your dog? Good point. I was going to say that. I appreciate you being here. Thanks for spending some time with us today. If you have a suggestion for a guest or a topic, please let Andrew know. Andrew at whistlekick.com. Thanks for your support. Thanks for doing all you do to help us do what we do. We appreciate it. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and have, have a great, great day. day.